Hi, this is Carl Jantz from Jantz Engineering. Uh, today I want to show you some tricks I use to put uh, Dana 60 and Dana 70 gears in 61 housings. If you've uh, been bit by this mistake or you got a good deal on a 61 front end, this is how you can make it usable. Um, you have to space the ring gear over 7 sixteenths of an inch on a Dana 60. Uh, carrier to make it fit the Dana 61 housing. Now, to do that, you're going to wind up using some ring gear spacers. You'll use two if you're running 410 and down gears. You'll use three if you're running 456 and up numerical gears. And then, of course, the bolts that come with the kit aren't going to be long enough, so we'll get these grade 9 fasteners. These are called ferry bolts. And of course, then they're a little long, so you got to put a hardened washer underneath it to make her work. All right, so back to the tricks. To get the 410 gears on, we use two ring gear spacers. And what you see is once these are piled up here, you're up to the original chamfer on the shoulder that holds the ring gear on. Now, if you look at the size of the chamfer on this one and the original chamfer, by the time you press the ring gear on, it would just be floating in space and hanging on the bolts. So what we do is we roll a band. This is slightly undersized. You get her stretched on, <laughs> beat it all the way down, we tack weld it on, and then that's machined so the shoulder height is the same diameter for when we put the spacers on. Um, that's that's about the, all there is to it. Now, if you're doing 70 gears, you would use this, which has the shoulder built into it. And of course, you'd use a 70 carrier, or you have to re-drill your 60 carrier. And you can actually use this actually use this as a drill guide template to drill your 70 ring gear bolt holes right in between your 60 ring gear bolt holes. And there you have it. Thank you very much. Alright. Alright, so we've got here a, a, a Yukon zip locker in a 61 housing and we've got uh, some ring gear spacers and then this is their air collar setup, and I want to show you how this is shimmed. Um, it's cheaper to make or to, to buy ring gear spacers than it is to try and machine one the right thickness. The thing is, it comes out a little bit too thick, so that means we have to shave a little off of here and add a few more shims here. happens when you're shimming is to get it in there right now I had it pretty loose in there you'll see in here where the o-rings are supposed to be I'm hanging off the edge so what you're gonna have to do after you get your backlash right and your patterns right on the final install of this and you put your o-rings in you're gonna have to take one or two of these real thick shims you're going to have to put those on the outside and then you're going to have to have a housing spreader <coughs> to jam these shims in with the right preload the housing spreader is going to have to be there you're going to booger them up but that will put that will put your o-rings on with your collar. All right. 